Hello, Scott. Hello, Rebecca. Welcome to Hardy Party of Five and a Half. I'm so glad I could be here today. I'm so glad you could be here too. I have a question for you. What's that? Have you ever thought about doing like a 23andMe thing or an Ancestry.com thing? I've, in passing, I've thought about it. Mm-hmm. Like I I think more I've thought, hey, is there been a, I know in our family somewhere, someone wrote a book about all that. Huh. And I'd like to locate that book to kind of know some of the ancestry. Yeah. So, but I've never really thought about doing the 23 and Me. Okay. Have you? I have thought about doing yeah. it, but are you worried that there might be another Scott Hardy out there? Can there be another scooter? There can't be another scooter. <laughs> <laughs> I have thought about doing it just, I don't know, out of curiosity, really, but I don't, I think, and I think my parents did it, but I can't really yeah. remember. So, well, I think in our culture now that we don't know much about our ancestry. So yeah. that's one thing that interests me. Like for me, I know like on my side, my grandparents, I know in the thirties and forties, what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And beyond that, I know there's a, my dad always said that we had a grandfather in the 1750s that helped survey the line between Virginia and North Carolina. But other yeah. than that, I don't really know anything about really my family tree or anything. So yeah. that would intrigue me to know, okay, where did, where did Scooter come from? Where did Scooter come from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's so cool. Maybe we should do this. What do you think? Uh, let's do it. <gasps> really? Yeah. Oh, okay. When it's kind of intimidating that maybe in your past, your ancestors have done some crime. So Ooh, I don't know if I ouch. want to learn about that. Yes. Also, I think that probably in some family histories, there's been some other people popping up that maybe people didn't know about, like siblings and parents and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, and our guest today, oh my goodness, what a cool story. Emily and Molly, they found out about each other in March of 2021. And then in May of 2022... They ran the amazing race together. They did. And they were 36 years old when they found out about each other. So crazy. Yeah. And their story is so endearing and sweet and funny and sappy. And you're going to love it. (laughs) Right? They are so awesome. They're so awesome. What a cool story. They're just just cool people. Yeah. They're just cool people. You're going to love it. Here's our interview with Emily and Molly on this season, Amazing Race. Don't want to miss it. And we're super excited to hear more about we're big, amazing race fans, but we also just like loved your story. We will talk a little bit about it, but we have an adopted son. And so we just loved your story and wanted to hear more about you guys. So thank you guys for taking time today to talk to us. Yeah, we're very for having us. Yeah, it's it's nice to talk to genuine fans, you know, yeah. Yeah, fans of the show because I know you guys love the Amazing Race. We um, do. We've actually yeah. sent our application, but we need it to do it again. It was a though. long time ago. Yeah. We need to do another one that's like more updated, I think. But well, yeah, we had our when we did it a long time ago. We had our middle son interview us, kind of like thing, and, and he, he was so much funnier than us. He's that, so funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like twelve, well, and he yeah. told the show. Yeah, we're like he's. It make- helps to have someone funny on the other end interview. Yeah, right. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but you should. We, if you if you do resubmit, you should just like interview each other because they oh, want to see yeah. like, that relationship. Okay, that's a great idea. I and like we've heard it. like uh-huh. we've talked to a few people that have been on the reality shows, and it's really like spur of the moment stuff. Like, yeah, they just go outside and do it, and that's the one the producers like. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Natural, hundred percent yourselves. Like, yeah, yeah. that's, that's awesome. That sounds like we should do that. We should totally do each other. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do it. <laughs> You're ho- you got to hold us to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you take each of us through your childhood? Like what was life like for each of you? You go first then? Sure. Yeah. I mean, life growing up for me was pretty normal. I had two older brothers. Um, so I was the youngest of three and I you know, I had friends, I lived in a neighborhood, I could walk up and down the street and play with friends at any time. Um, I had a great education, my family went on vacations. I mean, 
you know, nothing out of the norm. It was really, you know, pretty normal and happy. Yeah. Were your older siblings also adopted? They were not adopted. They okay. are um, biological to my adoptive parents. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And what about you, Molly? Uh, so I grew up um, in central Florida in what I assumed was a very normal <laughs> childhood <laughs> as well. Um, big difference though. I was an only child. I was raised an only child. Um, so I did not have that sibling experience growing up and yeah. um, uh, but, but same thing, like I had a lot of friends, you know, went to a mix of private and public schools. Um, dance was my main focus as a hobby. My mom was really dedicated to, you know, bringing me to auditions and competitions. Um, so I had, um, sort of a, a dance life and a school life and then the home life. So I never really felt like lonely, like I needed a sibling. All right. Um, I did. I played a lot of, you know, grocery store, jewelry store at home and my stuffed animals were (laughs) my customers. (laughs) I did that too. My two older brothers were not playing kitchen with me. (laughs) You know what? We always found it to be very healthy that our kids could play by themselves. I always said, when you grow up and you're in college, I need you to be able to entertain yourself if your friends are doing something you don't want to do. So yeah, those are healthy things. Yeah, <laughs> good point. Definitely. Very good point. Yeah. <laughs> so our oldest is adopted and we always, we decided that we would always let him know that he was adopted and tell him the whole story. So as y'all grew up, did they, did your parents share the whole story with you? Did you learn later how you were adopted and all that, or did it even come up? There's no specific point in time that I remember you know, them telling me, I, it was just something that I always knew. We had books about mm-hmm. adoption growing up. There were photographs of us um, at the airport when they were picking me up, um, you know, photographs of the naturalization. So it was never, never a secret. Um, mm-hmm. And they didn't make a big deal about it. It was just part of our story. Yeah. yeah. Same for me. It was, um, I mean, we don't look alike, obviously. So I think- <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, it, it was, um, you know, I think a necessity to sort of share that story early on. I also had a book, um, Why Was I Adopted? Okay. And the, as far as the adoption story goes, though, you know, the only story that my parents had was uh, an assumption that um, my birth mother was young and she had a child out of wedlock and that, um, you know, I was given up for adoption to have better care. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the story they were kind of given, or, or maybe they were kind of given some little, uh, some version of that, that sort of evolved. And that's just the story that I lived all my life with um, assuming, and I never had any interest in exploring that any further. Yeah. So then yeah. how, Oh, go ahead. Were you going to say something? Em? I was going to say I, on that, you know, to that point, I also had my adoption file and we had little bits of information and, you know, that was just sort of accepted as, you know, how we came to be or how I came to be in in their family. And yeah, um, yeah, like Molly, I never really thought to uh, explore that more. Yeah. Yeah. I, our son really hasn't either. And we have the same, I mean, we have a genetic history report, you know, of like what was filled out. Mm -hmm. So we kind of know like some certain things, but same thing. He's never been super curious about that. And it's always been like, you guys when raise you, me and you kind of forget that they're adopted, you yeah. know, like we don't, yeah. even, most of the time we don't even think about it. Yeah. We don't think about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just our kid. I didn't, I, I didn't do my research. Is your son um, also a transracial adoptee? No, he's no, domestic. He's, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. He has blonde hair and blue eyes, but so everybody he looks like Rebecca. No, he yeah. doesn't. Everybody says he looks like you. <laughs> I, I am so irritating. I'm like, hello. Uh, anyways. Yeah, no, he was, he was domestic. And um, so, yeah, but we were never opposed to that. It's just what fell into our laps. So well, yeah. and then yeah. we had two biological kids and they're all six, four. So it's all, like, they're all six feet, yeah. four inches. Even our adopt. Wow. It's so yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's funny how things oh, work out. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So walk us through how you guys found out about each other. This is so fascinating. Oh boy. <laughs> Who wants to tell wow, it's been a while since we've told this, like maybe a month actually. <laughs> um, well, it's kind of, it's kind of twofold. So um, I had a daughter when I was 24, she's now 13 and she always knew that I was adopted um, so around the age of five or six, we were actually trying to Google this to figure out when it when it started. But she had just this curiosity about my biological family. 
and she saw a commercial for like ancestry.com. Yeah. And it, she describes it as an Italian grandfather. There was an old Italian grandfather on this, in this commercial that they were talking about, you know, if you take this test, you'll find your biological family. And it was very black and white to her at that age. So she just really wanted to take a DNA test and find my family. Um, so she had asked and asked and asked for years. And finally for her 10th birthday, um, her father and I decided, you know, what do we got to lose? I was very skeptical. I'm like, we don't want to send your DNA off to a company. I don't know what I'm signing away. I'm certainly right. not reading hundred pages of fine print. What are they going to um, do with that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah exactly. What are they going to do with it? And, you know, I guess it became more widely popular over the years. So I became, you know, more comfortable with it. And I probably venture to say that there was more of a curiosity in me that maybe, you know, a part of me was wanting to maybe find out what surprises <laughs> we might yeah. come across, but, you know, keeping being realistic and not thinking really anything was going to come of it. Um, but anyway, so she took the test when she was 10 and two years later during COVID, we get a message that says you have a new DNA relative and this person's trying to contact you. <laughs> yeah. So and and guess to, who that was. <laughs> and to my story. <laughs> yeah. So I did not, um, I did not do the DNA kit with the intention of finding family. I had a, um, health scare. I had to have a mammogram an ultrasound done and, you know, that came out clean. Um, but it, it was at that point, I was like, you know what, I need to get what I can out of my health history. And so 23 yeah. and offers the genetic, um, markers, you know, sort of testing, um, science. And so I submitted with that being my main goal wow. and, um, you know, I thought my husband and I tried to make it fun. We're like, maybe you're not hundred percent Korean. Like that would be the <laughs> coolest thing to find out. Yeah. Um, and then I open up the test results and it says, you have a close relative. I'm like, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. This close. <laughs> yeah. 49.96% DNA, uh, shared across yourself and this person. I mean, that's pretty darn close. So, yeah. um, definitely not not what I was expecting, oh my um, especially when it said I had a daughter. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I know I don't have a daughter. Yeah, so. pretty sure that didn't happen. Yeah. So then once you guys make that, I don't know, really, no, we've not ever done that. So once you guys do that on there, how do they, did they put you in, are you able to contact each other through that service? Yeah. So it's um, a two way. So when you submit your results, you don't have to keep it public. Um, you know, okay. you don't have to necessarily open up your DNA profile for others to match, but lucky enough, you know, we both had done that. Um, so you have to request to connect and that person has to accept. So I actually told my husband, I'm like, I, I requested to connect. And he said, well, don't be disappointed if you don't hear for months or ever, this person may be freaked out, may not want to, you know, meet you. Yeah. And like 30 minutes later, I got a message. <laughs> how you could still... you ignore, how could you ignore yeah. a 49.96%? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but well, you I'm both... pretty sure if my husband, who is a very, you know, he keeps to himself a lot. If he would have got that, he probably would have just canceled his account and just said, I don't want to know. <laughs> like, I'm not going there. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> Okay. So you still though, don't know what you're actually about to find, right? You just think it, I mean, what, I don't even know what you're thinking, but how, so, so then how did we figure out we're twins? <laughs> so I was, I, oh, go ahead. I was to say, I have, um, my husband and I both have science backgrounds. We're both, um, trained pharmacists. Um, and so, you know, the chi square test, all this biology stuff was kind of flooding back in. And so I, I, I kind of knew, but at that point it's like not possible. Like this is not a movie like this. No, this can't be. Um, so I think the thought was there that I probably have a sibling who has a daughter and based on the amount of DNA, it's probably a twin, <laughs> but I just, oh my gosh. there was something limiting my belief until I actually like got the message from Izzy and Emily, <laughs> but you had a whole different process to, to, I, right. I was too flustered at the time. Like it did. I mean, obviously now it makes sense. Identical twin 49, you know, 50% DNA match yeah. Yeah. Uh, with my daughter. But at the time, 
we had Molly's full name. So we, me and my family were on Google. We're looking at photos. <laughs> you know, there was a video of her and I'm like, God, she looks, maybe she could be a little bit older than me. Like I was, we couldn't really quite figure it out. I was thinking, well, maybe she was, you know, a year older than me when we were adopted, you know, I, I feel silly now that I don't yeah. recognize <laughs> that she was an identical twin. Um, but, um, but I didn't see the, the identical twin piece when I first looked at photos of her. Okay. So I think that kind of threw me off. It was the same Every, for me. Everyone else did. <laughs> yeah. It, but, but I think what it is, is so the first picture I found of Emily. Um, so the message that Izzy sent was my who's mom. Izzy? Who's Izzy? Was, oh, oh, Izzy that's my is daughter. my niece. Oh, oh yeah. okay. The daughter. Yeah. Okay. So she's okay. the one who took the test. And um, when we connected, I kind of said, you know, hey, I don't know how we have this, you know, much DNA shared between us. I'm curious what our relationship could be. I was adopted from South Korea in 1985. And her message back was, wow, Molly, my mother was adopted from South Korea and her birthday is March 29th. And this oh is March 3rd. And so I, my jaw just dropped. I mean, yeah. immediate, that's obviously the, the moment that I obviously knew. She knew. Um, but even though I knew that, I, I had Googled Emily and I saw her LinkedIn picture. And she, it, it must have been an older photo, right, Em? Um, yeah, yeah. But she was, she was a lot paler than I was. And she had on this Still like, really pretty magenta <laughs> scarf. <laughs> But she was like in a, in a scene where I don't have that memory. And so when you look at a photo of someone and it, it, you don't have that memory, like, I, I don't know. It just, it was like, this yeah. doesn't look like me at all. But I sent that same photo to my friends and they were like, why are you sending me this picture of you? I'm oh, like, what do you mean? They're like, <laughs> you look pale and why are you in like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my they gosh. could see it better than you because you're probably not believing it you yeah. know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's probably so, like more up here in your brain than like just a psychological like trying to figure that out yep yeah well, it's funny that you investigated each other because rebecca calls it fbi she calls yeah. it facebook investigation yeah and that's how <laughs> yes. she finds out about people i find yeah. out a lot about people yeah <laughs> especially if you're trying to date one of my kids i'll be finding out about that's you. right <laughs> <laughs> I might have to send you some names. Send me, I girl, all I need is a name. That's what I tell my kids all the time. I'm like, all I need is a name, maybe a license plate. <laughs> She'll have all the info by the end of the day. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Love it. So you also then, like true crime. Oh yeah, okay. sure. We like that. <laughs> yeah. We like that. But you usually have it figured out pretty quick, though. Yeah. yeah. I think if it's if it's fabricated, I mean if it's not like a real true crime story, then you can kind of figure out those shows pretty easily. But yeah. yeah. It is different when they're trying to date one of your kids, so then it becomes a whole That's really true crime. Like, <laughs> intense ball <Yes>. game. <laughs> Higher stakes. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Um, I tell my kids there's like three rules for dating our our one of our boys, and they're like, be able to throw a baseball because we got married on a softball field. So we play we've always played a lot of sports. Um, love Jesus and um be an orphan because I really don't want to deal with in-laws. Um <laughs> <laughs> So these aren't working out very well for me. I thought I'd tell you, but these were my original. Plans, That's a pretty you know? big list. Yeah, it's a big list. Oh. <laughs> Being an orphan might be a hard one. <laughs> right. Yeah. You don't really want to wish them. I it, know. I know. <laughs> it's not working out. So what was it like? Like you've investigated each other. You're starting to believe it's happened that you do have a sister. What was it like when you first met in person? Oh yeah. When did you meet? In person? Yeah. Did you so quickly we, make that happen? Yeah. So we met on. Weeks. Yeah. So okay. we, we discovered one another March 3rd and then our 36th birthday was March 29th. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did not do any sort of FaceTiming or anything oh. uh, to see each other's face for the first time in person. So March 29th, 2021. Um, I don't know about you, Em, but like that day was just, I know the overall feeling was incredible. You know, there was of course tears, but happy tears and maybe a sense of relief. I don't know. Um, but we have, you know, recordings of it and I'm so grateful for that because to watch it back is special to like go through that again, to relive it. Um, yeah. because that, that is truly like the most life, at least for me, I know you have, a, you've had a child, but for me, that was the most life-changing, excuse me, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't good. I, I told myself I'm going to make it through this and I'll cry. 
<laughs> you don't need to make it through without crying. But, um, but yeah, yeah, that was that was the most life changing day. Wow, I can't imagine. And was that like at an airport or like where did you like make that connection happen? <sighs> we actually met at a hotel in Fort oh. Lauderdale. So okay. uh, my my work actually bought plane tickets for me and my daughter to fly down to South wow. Florida to meet Molly and. Um, <laughs> Good Morning America third hour set us up um, at a hotel. And I remember that day being full of so much anxiety and excitement. And Mm -hmm. then the moment she walked out the door and we met and we hugged, I can't even, it's so hard to describe the overwhelming like happiness and ease. Like it was so easy. And like, we just fell into each other's arms and, I felt the most comfortable with her that I had felt in many, many, many years. And it was just a a moment of like really feeling whole. Yeah. And I'm starting to cry. (laughs) Well, I am too. We're all going to be crying. (laughs) Listen, I'll I'll hold it together for all of us. Yeah, it was just (laughs) an incredible moment that's almost impossible to put into words. Yeah, really. I bet. And I am so glad somebody thought to record that because I bet looking back, it is a whole different set of emotions. What, you know, watching it and replay, of course. So then, oh yeah. I mean, I can't imagine. And then I don't know, I would be thinking through like, I'm going to sit down with this person that looks just like me that I've never seen before, but we're family. And so I would be wondering, is there like going to be some awkwardness in conversation? Are we just going to be like, (laughs) yeah. Oh my gosh. We're, we're the same person or like, all these questions I would, I don't know. I would probably, I would probably be like you, Emily, and just like the, a little bit of nervous anxiety, but also like, so ready, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Our first meal together was just us staring at each other, giggling and laughing (laughs) at how we ate. And it was just, it was so fun. So much fun. I love it. And Izzy was with you when you guys met. So you met your niece too, Molly. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, so what, if you if you um, look for, you can search for the GMA three um, broadcasts. The whole okay. story is up there, so you can actually see it happen. My name is Emily Bushnell, and today is my thirty sixth birthday. I was adopted when I was three months old. I came to the United States on an airplane from Korea. My name is Molly Sinert, and today is my thirty sixth birthday. I was also adopted to a Jewish family. And neither of them knew that the other existed. They decided they wouldn't Zoom or FaceTime when they saw each other for the first time. They wanted it to be in person. On our birthday. March 29th, and we were there. (laughs) Oh my God. It's the happiest moment of my life. I can honestly say that. And then I, a couple months ago, I think posted, my husband had filmed me the, you know, couple minutes before I walked out to meet Emily for the first time. And Uh so it's the raw moments of like what I was feeling at the time. So it's, I posted it to our TikTok. um, Okay. So you can kind of see it there. And sometimes I just watch it to, because <laughs> I miss her. You know? yeah. like, I want to relive that moment over and over again, because we don't yeah. get to see stuff that often. So what did uh, Izzy think about this? That's my favorite video. <laughs> no, he's a, yeah. What did Izzy think, Emily? Because oh my kinda, God. She know. takes Izzy's all the credit just, for this, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. She's, she's very shy. She's a little introverted and shy like I am. So she doesn't like to talk about it much. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure that she really understands yet the gravity and the weight of you know this discovery it's a very yeah. exciting thing for us and we're all celebrating and I think when she's older she'll appreciate it but mm-hmm. man she's just over the moon she got the best auntie <laughs> <laughs> they have so much fun together and just to be able to grow our family it's just been incredible and you know yeah. she's an only child so mm-hmm. you know the more love the yeah. better yeah I kind of feel like she's like a little version of me sometimes like oh totally (laughs) there are pictures of us and she actually I think looks more like me which is weird yeah (laughs) she totally does look more like you I don't know if the eyelashes or (laughs) that's so great I love that so much okay so now you've met we've had the whole like March 29th 2021 so then we're 
I mean, over that first dinner, are you like, let's sign up for the amazing race? Like, do you love that show like me? So how did we get from dinner to giggly dinner to we're going to run this race together? Oh, well, fast forward. So with our story being shown on GMA three, we actually got the opportunity to um, be on the Ellen show. Okay. Um, so we, we actually interviewed with Wanda Sykes. Um, we got to meet John, Don Cheadle backstage, which was really Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, so cool through that, I think, you know, we were kind of viral, I guess. Is that what you call it? Yeah. And so one of the producers, um, casting producers uh, saw our story and had reached out through social media and suggested that we you know, apply for the amazing race because it's a show about relationships and yeah. it could get you like a lot of time together. And we sort of ignored that for quite a few weeks, maybe even a couple months. <laughs> I think it was a couple months. We just had so much going on. For sure. Yeah. It's like, and, and I think there's a part of me that was like, is this real? Like, th- yes. Yes. Could, could this really be true? <laughs> yes. I would think yeah. every time you woke, you would wake up in the morning, I would think both of you would be having the same thoughts. Like, wait, <laughs> Did that really happen? <laughs> yeah. Like, we can't be on TV. Like, no one yeah. wants to watch us. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> but I think, like, we, um, I had planned to visit Emily in January. And we're like, you know what? We're going to be together. Like, what? what's the harm in trying, right? Like, let's yeah. do it. And, and nothing and, to lose. Yeah. yeah. I had watched the show when I was a kid with my parents, not a kid, I was a teenager. I watched it with my parents. I love to travel. They always took me all around the world. Um, so I was like, let's just do it. And we'll see if our work will give us, you know, the time off if we make it, but maybe we won't even have to get there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So it sounds, you get on the amazing race. So it sounds like speed dating at this point, like you're really <laughs> going to get to know each other quick. <laughs> but from March 29th. So, so when was, yeah. when did you go on the race? What was the date? Uh, it was May of 20. Oh my gosh. 22. May 2022. Yeah. Okay. May 2022. Okay, yeah. So wow. yeah. So you had a year of like conversation of catch up conversation. Okay. But wow. they hadn't lived with each other. There's differences. Like we know <laughs> yeah. with kids, when they live together and when you haven't, there's a different dynamic. So what was it like being on the road together? Were you yeah. in the same room in the hotels or how did that work? Yeah, well, so that year that we had together before we went on the race, any time that we were with one another, it wasn't just the two of us alone. We were always with other people. It was our family, yeah. our friends. Wow, so yeah. we had never really spent any, you know, time together, just the two of us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they locked us up in a hotel room twenty four seven. But I, I have to say, while it might have been challenging for other couples. Um, it was a total dream. It was an absolute dream. Yeah. yeah. Like at the end of the day, when you get to the hotel, you're like, okay, now we can really talk. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, That's- we had deep conversations about how we were processing, you know, our adoption because throughout the year we had also started to dig back into our adoption stories. We got more records from our adoption agencies, um, found out more about our, up, uh, our, our, biological family. Um, and it's, it's been a lot to process. And so, you know, on a Wednesday night, after you worked for like 10 hours and you talk on the phone, you're not ready to dive into that kind of conversation. Um, so this opportunity really like supported our growth journey into understanding our adoption and, and processing it all. Um, because Otherwise, you know, as busy career adults, like we're, we don't have the time to focus on that. Right. Or to yeah. Work it. yeah. Yeah. So, I think, and more, more importantly, it, it gave us an opportunity to make memories together, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, have moments to look back to and yeah. laugh about, cry about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, moments we can all watch. And watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We wish there was behind the scenes footage this year because they yeah. have so the scenes sad. Back here. <laughs> I bet that was really robbed. good. Yeah, you did get <laughs> robbed. Okay, maybe just a little like since maybe a sensitive question, but like both of your adoptive parents, how how are they doing in this? And did have they met? Oh yes, they're best so, friends. Are yeah. they? Okay, that's what I wanted you to say. <laughs> 
Our, our, we were actually raised pretty similar barring the lack of siblings on, on my end, but, right. um, both of our families were, um, sort of, uh, cultural reform Jews. So uh-huh. going to synagogue and eating matzo ball soup and yeah, you know, so all, the, all these weird things that you don't know many other men. I mean, they're out there. Sam Fuderman's yeah. actually was raised Jewish as well, but, uh-huh. um, uh, you know, things that you just wouldn't expect. Like sh- I could have come, I could have been adopted to a family who, you yeah. know, was y- lived on a yacht and right. all these fancy things. And maybe Emily grew up on a farm, but yeah. we were so similar. So similar. Um, yeah. It made it so easy. I have, I have to comment on that and just note that, you know, j- just because we were raised in Jewish households. Yes. We, we were raised with some similar, you know, traditions and around similar culture, but, our families actually both are like descend from like the Jewish communities in Philadelphia. My grandparents were down in South Florida. Oh um, I, I don't want to offend anybody who's saying this, but I think they we both came from kind of like quirky reformed Jewish families. And I think <laughs> yeah. about other Jewish families in our lives that, you know, Not had I been adopted into those families, it wouldn't have been the same. Yeah. So Molly's Molly's father and my mother very well could have been siblings, and they are just like two peas in a pod. It is just so bizarre and just so beautiful. Well, that's um, the craziness of it. Is like you grew up very very similar with the quirkiness that you're talking about. I it's just it. yeah. it's amazing that that happened that way. Yeah, yeah it's very it's so it's funny so to watch. When I see Emily interact with her mom, <laughs> it's just the same way that I interact with my dad. Like you know. <laughs> <laughs> the eye roll, the mom, dad, like really, come on. <laughs> it's just, it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they met um, in May of 21. Okay. Um, in Philadelphia. And so it, it was, you know, an, an easy, easy introduction. That's nice. Yeah. That's so great. they just want to hang out without y'all. It's like, y'all go on. We're good. <laughs> yeah. on vacation they, they will be. They do. <laughs> yeah. That's so fun. That's awesome. I love it. Okay. So, so you mentioned okay. behind the scenes. So are there, is there a moment or two that y'all each remember that, yeah. that you, that sticks out to you in the whole race? There's, there's quite a few. <laughs> yeah, there's a few. Um, <laughs> The first one that comes to mind is on our way to Bologna, uh, where we thankfully won that day. Um, Queens Don't Stop Me Now came on the radio. And Molly and I were sitting in the front row of the passenger van. All the other teams and the crew were behind us. And we were just belting out the song. <laughs> we both knew the lyrics. We had everybody in the back, you know, it was cheer. And it was so 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 fun i mean that's the kind of silly stuff i do that in my car when i'm alone yeah <laughs> it was so nice to have molly by my side uh, um yeah. and we can't sing so <laughs> in your car everybody so, sounds good totally though. off tune it's true we it's also so we fun. also belted out some um on the way to austria we were singing like the whole score to sound of music <laughs> oh yeah oh, there's wow. lots, lots of lots of singing on all the long drives we were we were singing quite a bit <laughs> No yeah. radio, so. No, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did I did get to play a joke on Emily in Munich. So um, <laughs> they didn't show <laughs> this part, but I was so nervous at the starting line. When we got our clue um, and had to run and pick up our backpacks, I was just like fumbling, shaking. I couldn't figure out where to put things, the money, the, the, the instructions, the clue, the envelope. I had the fanny pack, so I knew I was going to be responsible for all this stuff. And I just, I kept dropping everything. <laughs> I dropped the clue right at the starting line. All I day. <laughs> and fell on the way to roll and I dropped the clue again. So we're in the car and we're just having this like hard time navigating the streets of Germany because the street names are different on each side of the road. I'm trying to pronounce these words in German. I should have been trying to sell them so she could look for them. It was a mess. And so there was just, it was stressful. And I was like, you know what, let me just make it a little bit lighter in here. So I had a bad choice of, of uh, delivery, I guess, but I was like, M, oh my God, I lost the money. And we were on the way to go. We had to park and pay. So the camera guy's in the front and he goes, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, this is 
she it. had us all fooled. <laughs> oh all my three gosh. of us were fooled. <laughs> She was gonna. She was so pissed. I could tell. Like, we oh, were so mad. and this is at the very start. <laughs> the very yes. first leg. Like, oh my! So God. you're breaking the ice off the. Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. but it was so great. I got to see like a side of her that I hadn't seen. Yeah. You know, or didn't know. It was and great. Like, then, oh, that's how it's gonna. After go. the fact, yeah. it was great. <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you, that was like the only time I wasn't like uptight the whole race. <laughs> really. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's so fun. Well, you know, if we ever get on it, like that was a good tip right there. She said, "Spell the names of oh, the yeah. streets." And yes, and take yeah. notes of this stuff. Like, well, I kind of like now that you have to drive yourselves because in years past, taxi drivers would just kill your race mm-hmm. if you got the the wrong taxi driver. Yeah, so I kind of like having it in your own. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. you, you're driving, so it's up to you. So yeah, yeah. I almost feel like because I know I I heard a rumor that. For season 36, the charter plane's going away. Okay. Uh, that might mean there's less driving, self-driving. But I almost want to say if if we were to go back on the race and we had taxi cabs, I would still want to get directions from a local. Oh, so yeah. I could know where, the, like, I don't want to be blind <laughs> in a taxi cab. <laughs> we're making mental <laughs> notes. I just want to have an idea like, okay, we should be going north for about, you know, five yeah. minutes and then maybe yeah. go west. Um, because I would hate for that, that type of scenario to Molly, don't, me. don't share your secrets. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. Your share your secrets. Yeah. Babe, we're way kidding. too old for mental notes. I hope you're writing this down. <laughs> well, we can review the video. We'll review the video. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. So what was like your, during the race? Cause y'all always looked so even kill and very concentrated and, but what was for each of y'all, what was like your lowest moment of the race when you thought, oh man, this, this is terrible. Was there a moment that you're like, well, Emily's leg, I was going to ask. Oh yeah. The knee. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My, my lowest moment during the race, when we were actively racing. Oh, that's tough. Mm -hmm. It, it was probably coming up to the finish line in Toulouse. Oh, right. Um, Cause at, at that point I thought that we were going to be out of the race. I thought we were done. Yeah. Um, I haven't thought about that question. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> did you think we were, did you think we were coming in last? No, I didn't think that I was going to be able to, to continue on. I mean, I was, oh, you in, the that was, was take you out. that was when I, I mean, the pain was just immense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's when yeah. I took God. When I, when I look at those, the, the faces that I was making, I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I, I did that. And I would not, Molly kept saying we should just walk. And I was like, I just have to run. I just have to get off my feet mm-hmm. as fast as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. But yeah, that was probably my lowest moment. Yeah. So what ended up being wrong with your knee? Like, what did you get some extra, did you get some medical attention? I did. I, um, I ended up fracturing both of my tibias. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, both of them? It was, yeah. So I don't think I, the fra- the right leg, I didn't fracture until Nashville, um, fortunately. Oh, but it was goodness. just a, a case of overcompensation. And um, I've been told I need to go get a bone density scan by my sister. <laughs> and by Derek um, Zhao's dad. So Derek's yes. dad is a physician. And I was yes. telling him the story and he was like, did she get a bone density test? I'm like, I've been trying to tell her. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I think, I think what happened, I went to the sports medicine doctor, we got my MRIs, we, you know, confirmed the, the fractures. I started PT. Um, I'm supposed to start a running regimen. I'm honestly a little bit fearful. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay now, you know, my bones are fully healed, Yeah. but I think the idea was to start running again, see how I react. And, you know, if I need further medical attention, then we'll go back and we'll figure out what's going on. So okay. it's a 2023 goal. Yeah. yeah. So y'all pulled it <laughs> off good because we had no idea it was that bad. Yeah. Y'all were doing a great job despite that. Yeah. Did you, Molly, did you even know it was you that You didn't bad? know Molly? I did not. I, I assume because she could still walk and run on it, that it wasn't yeah. that bad. Yeah. Um, kind of a strain and, of some sort. Yeah. And I know, like for me, I know she's very much like me and I should have thought about this, but I will work through the pain, whatever. I will keep going if I have an objective, you know, especially when a million dollars is on the line. Right. And so 
might sort of, you know, downplay. And I think you definitely downplayed. Um, but had, had you told me how bad you were actually feeling, you wouldn't have I let us continue. Let you go. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I yeah. just pulled it. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not just also about like, there's a million dollars online, but also I think I would feel responsible for like, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. exactly. Wow. Yeah. I probably yeah. would still say I'm done, but I'm just saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am not as strong as Emily. Apparently. So you didn't <laughs> win, but what was it like finishing the whole race? To me, that would be even a great goal to just fi- be that last three, be the last three teams. So yeah. what was it like getting through the whole thing? Oh my God. I, we went into it thinking we just can't be out first. Like yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can make like the top, you know, six, like the top half. Um, but let's just try as, as hard as we can. We didn't realize how good we would be at the challenges. Um, yeah. And I think like once we got, we broached the top six, even though despite the knee, we're like, as long as we can get to the challenges, like we can, we can win. Like we truly yeah. thought we could win. Um, and I still think we could have, we actually, we just learned recently that we finished the final challenge, the piano task. We finished that um, in about just over half the time that um, each of the other teams had oh, finished wow. it. That's so crazy. So we made up a boatload of time um, just on that single challenge. And wow. we were maybe like 10, 15 minutes behind Derek and Claire. So it was, you know, every little mistake counts Everyone. when you're in a tight race like that. Yeah. It's so mm-hmm. crazy. Cause us watching it, of course, we're always like, we would do this challenge. We would do that challenge. But as you it's guys, it's so easy to say that it's when you're so easy. Of it, yeah. but as you guys <laughs> continue to win and then you'd come upon a challenge, both of us would be like, Emily probably puts motorcycles together for a living. <laughs> <Right>. or <laughs> then we, then She's been studying this on the Right. Side. And the next challenge we'd be like, I'm sure one of them probably speaks this language, you know? So like, <laughs> then we just knew that you guys were going to just knock it out of the park. And then the whole, I think the one where there's like the anatomy where you had to put the anatomy together, you're walking up and we, one of us, I don't remember, we're probably like, one of them probably has history here too. And I sure enough, one of you is like, <laughs> and I was like, see, they, they, they do every, we're not this well-rounded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well rounded. We yeah, they really did. It's, it really is, you know, partially luck. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the, the challenges just kind of all met up to like yeah. what your drinks were. I think honestly, honestly yeah. I think grilling the fish was our toughest. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> oh, oh funny, funny note on that. They didn't show this and I'm surprised they didn't, but Molly's such a perfectionist that she kept throwing fish away. <laughs> and I think it was after we got rejected the first time I was like, forget this. I'm not sitting here for another 25 minutes curling these fish. So I started picking through our reject pile and I was pulling them off and putting them back together. Oh my and God. we were good. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, that was so That's funny. Hilarious. They're interviewing me. They're like, what are you doing? I was like, don't tell Molly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pull them out of the trash. That's crazy. That did look difficult. They kept like f- f- like breaking. Or oh, that was, like, it was yeah, yeah, that was bad. Ugh. And see, I thought I thought the fish had to be fully intact, and oh. it really didn't. It just had to be cooked. Like so, yeah. they could have been broken on one side. So I probably we could have been out of there at least fifteen minutes earlier than we yeah. were. <laughs> <laughs> Lessons oh, learned. On, okay, here's a tip for judging tasks. Just try to get it judged. You never know. They might say yes. Yeah. They might say yes. Just like yeah. no harm in asking. Yep. Yeah. That- yep. When it helps the viewers, because we always talk about when y'all mess up on the air, they always have that ding, 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 ding. That so we, sound. That, we yes. know that you just messed yeah. up. We're like, oh. But y'all don't know yet. Right. So. Y'all don't know yet. <laughs> yeah. we, oh, we've always said that the tasks that are the most physical tend to be quicker, but they yes. exhaust you. And then the ones that take your brain a little more take a little longer. But yeah. Yep. Who knows? Who knows? Okay. So we're going to play a little, a quick little game. This will be very silly and, and easy, but we just want to know like, how well have you gotten to know each other? So I'll ask a question. We'll alternate asking questions. Yep. And like you, like Molly, you were, you're going to point up and, yeah, and she's you point you, down. Yeah. or you point at yourself. Or you, you point at yourself. You. Yeah. You point at okay. yourself if you think it's you. Okay. We'll let you know if you agreed or not. Since so maybe we can start a fight and they can fight off air. Yeah. Uh, sisters have to fight sometimes, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. We all, we have all boys. I'm assuming sisters fight. Yeah. Maybe not their age of sisters. I would think yeah, that. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Are you ready? Who is the early riser? 
<laughs> okay, you agreed on that one. You agreed on that one. Yes. 100% so far. 100%. Okay. Not my choice, though. <laughs> not, oh, yeah. You're really, just used yeah. to it. That's just what you do. Being a okay. mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. Okay, who spends more time getting ready in the mornings? Who needs more time? Ooh. I don't get ready in the mornings. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <Work> from home. <laughs> I just, just getting ready period to go out somewhere. To go, okay. to go out. <laughs> okay. To go out. Ma- yeah. Molly. Okay, so you're two for two. Sorry. Okay. We'll let that we go. Okay. Okay. Who's the better driver? Yeah. Uh, you agree again? Yeah. Well, wow. she drove most of the time. Now, do yeah. you know how to drive a stick shift, Molly? No, but do- when, when we go back on the race, yeah. I'm going to learn. You're going to learn. And yeah. you already knew how to drive, Emily, or did you learn for that? Four hours, like the week before we left. Oh, really? <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. that's so funny. Yeah, because it there was, was very, very yeah. limited on time between the time we knew we were going on the race to the time we had to leave. I had a very difficult time locating a stick shift vehicle to learn on. I couldn't yeah. rent one anywhere. Oh my gosh! Um, so I had to take what I could get in terms of you know friends and relatives who could yeah. you know give me some time in their vehicles. It it was yeah. <laughs> and it was a crash in, course for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got that one vehicle. I don't remember where you were, but it was not like a normal. It was, was it a G wagon? What were you in? Oh, Land Rover. It was a Land Rover. Yeah. Yeah. What's funny is our neighbor has that car, but with the steering wheel on the other side of the road, cause he's from um, uh, Australia. Okay. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to use his car. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. I think it, I'm the one that drives the stick shifts. So yeah. I never me. learned, so. but you're better. Well, we've always said you're the navigator, but lately you've been what we've called the navigator. Cause yeah. he sleeps in the passenger seat. <laughs> well, you can turn the phone. I make sure the phone's up and then I can take it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. This next one could get a little personal here. We'll see. Well, I think I know the answer, but yeah, I think we already thing. found out Yeah, yeah. who's the better dancer oh. yeah. okay yeah. molly again so yeah. y'all have agreed there's on all a, of there's, this there's another behind the scenes i truly thought in my heart of hearts that <laughs> dancing and rhythm was in our genes because i knew singing wasn't so i'm like i'm pretty sure emily can dance she uh-huh. told me she like stumbled in zumba but i'm like no i think she can dance yeah so that's why we did the dance challenge in austria uh-huh. and we will never do a dance show. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So it is choreographed dancing is not something that I am anywhere remotely good at. That's funny. Remotely close to good. I'm horrible. horrible so Molly, dancer. you can rest assured that's not a gene thing that you actually just worked your butt off and you're good at it. I, yeah, I'm a hard yeah. worker. <laughs> there you go. You're a hard worker. Maybe I need to take some dance lessons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll learn how to drive um, stick. I'll take some dance lessons. Yeah, yes, yes. You'll be ready for the next one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. So who snores louder? Do either of you snore? Oh. <laughs> <You know that. laughs> okay. You, you both said Emily. So Emily's the loudest. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> yeah. I only say that because Izzy told me you snored sometimes. Oh, yeah. You didn't yeah. witness that on the amazing I, race. You probably both crashed so hard. Nobody was awake. Yeah. Like, I bet you're so tired. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely didn't, didn't notice on the race. <laughs> my, yeah. I'm told that my snoring is like very light and kind of cute. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's so funny. I've never heard anyone describe their snoring, snoring as cute. cute. I know. <laughs> I don't know if they're telling the truth, Molly, but I think she's probably right. <laughs> okay. We've heard that neither one of you are great singers, but who between the two of you is a better singer? <sighs> Or is it pretty much is it even? just pretty both bad? <laughs> well, we just, we took this to Instagram. <laughs> we did. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. I was watching Sound of Music um, uh, around Christmas and I, I, it's something I watch every year. And I was like, let me just do this challenge. So I posted a video of So Do La Fa Mi Do Re. And I said, that's That's pretty good. (laughs) Yeah, that was good. That was a great. (laughs) I'm not even going to try. Molly won. (laughs) Molly (laughs) Molly wins. Okay. Instagram thought we were the same. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. Although I did notice that you voted for yourself. So we had a couple percentage points. (laughs) 
Uh, my dog. Awesome. Oh, look. Well, what's your dog's name? Hey, Babs. This is Ruth. Oh, oh so cute. It's a cutie. <laughs> she has um, a very big head. Okay. Yes. Come on. Come on. Okay, so who is the biggest daredevil? Uh, okay. You both picked Emily. <laughs> yeah. Hey, have they, they've agreed on everything, right? I know. They have agreed oh, on everything. Gosh. Okay. I think you've agreed on everything. Okay. Oh, here's a good here's one. A, this is a good one you came up with, Rebecca. Thanks. This is going to tell us a lot about y'all. Who is more likely to talk their way out of a speeding ticket? Oh. <laughs> That's a good one. Talk their way out? Uh, oh. you, okay, you finally <laughs> disagree. I don't. Yeah, you picked each other. <laughs> That's funny. I, I would yeah. be so scared. I wouldn't even try. Yeah, I I don't think I could try. I. <laughs> <laughs> You could be like, don't you know I was on the amazing race? Like, yeah. yeah, I was speeding. <laughs> just admit it. Yeah. I don't know if I was, but just give me the ticket. Just give me the ticket. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I you think would you would be more successful at it, Emily. You work with lawyers. Like, you could figure something out. Figure something oh. out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, so who is more likely to be late? Oh. Yeah. Oh, you both picked Emily. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but not because she's taking time getting ready. I honestly no. don't know why. <laughs> she just gets up late. Uh, What's well, like our kids, yeah. our sons will get up, like, we'll tell them here, we need to be here at this time. And they will wake up like five minutes before we have to leave. And then we're out. Yeah. yeah. Times, times were just a guideline for my family growing up. Yeah. And that was very different in Molly's household. Yeah, that yeah, was we were we were raised weird. differently in that regard. Okay, yeah. interesting. Hmm. Yeah, Scott, you're you're you know you're you're late a lot. Well, yeah, I'm the artist type. <laughs> that yeah, time is just a good suggestion sometimes. No, you know? it's I mean, not. No. Yeah, <laughs> if you ask any of our kids why we've been late to church every day, every Sunday, yeah, for thirty years, it's they, <laughs> they, they would say because Dad comes to the car carrying his shoes and his Bible and his keys, yeah, and his coffee, yeah. yeah. <laughs> always running and i have all the kids in the car ready to go they look spiffy and we're waiting on scott yeah well okay, okay so if you go in the race you cannot be late <laughs> oh no no i'll be focused and i'll be focused yeah. and ready on that and i'll have some ice water to yeah throw. To display yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay here's our last one who's the most organized uh, i think you right i don't yeah. know i think we're i think we're kind of equal oh, nice, but yeah. i'll say I'll say me. Okay. Yeah. okay. I don't know. I think maybe, just for, I mean, maybe because I have, I have so much more that needs to be organized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right. So what do you do? Um, I uh, manage a law firm. Oh, oh okay. Gosh. Yeah. You do have to be organized. For <laughs> oh that. gosh. Yeah. That's a great response. <laughs> <laughs> great reaction. And you're a pharmacist. <laughs> Is that right, Molly? I am, but I, I'm currently working on the business side of okay. um, healthcare uh, delivery. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's okay. Great. They did so good with the game. You guys did great. You only disagreed on one of them. Yeah. That's so you could be that's... sisters. <laughs> <laughs> it's confirmed now. I, it's confirmed. I think a lot of that stuff maybe we learned about each other on the race, too. Yeah. Yeah. As, as part of our race journey. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I wondered if like sleeping in the same room like helped you kind of like figure out these these things yeah about each of you so that was that's fun super cool <laughs> awesome guys thank you so much i mean this was so fun for us we're fanning out over here because we have loved watching <laughs> you guys on tv and now we're getting to talk to you and your story was so heartwarming to us so we just thank you for taking time to talk to us today and letting us know a little bit more about your story and it's just been so great to hear you're so Thanks welcome and thank you yeah it, it's, yes. this was Super fun. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. If we get on the race, we'll be shooting an email out. So yeah. yeah tell, tell us what we should do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, babe. Spit into this cup. Okay. I already did. You didn't know that, did you? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do this 23 and me. I think we should do it. Yeah. Let's right? see what, let's see what's going on behind the scenes of the Hardy and kind family. That's right. We've got some, like, I've got some German and English. Yeah. I've got English and Scottish. I mean, who which knows? is why I'm called Scott, probably, maybe. Is it? Mm, I don't, I think, don't so. know. I don't think that has anything to do with it. <laughs> I don't think so. There's a whole country <laughs> named after me, so there must be a there must be a link. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, I thought the interview was so great. I loved getting to know them. Also gave us some tips on the down low. Mm, for... Nobody else is going to know these tips that we found out. That's right. Yeah. Well, we will have to, if we do get on the amazing race, we will have to send them an email and say, what are things we need to work on? Well, and then after we win, we can say, Emily, Molly, thank you so much. <laughs> this is your, tro this is your million dollars as well, but you can't have any. <laughs> Maybe we could fly to each city and take them to dinner. Okay. Yeah. I would do that. Let's right. do it. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this interview with Molly and Emily. Also, go watch this season's Amazing Race because it's so fun and you'll want to cheer for them too. They're awesome, right? They sure are. Hardy Party Five and a Half, over and out. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.